Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the morning briefing here on Friedman Adventures. It is so great to be with you all. We've got so many interesting stories for you today, including a 178.4 pound bluefin tuna taken on a dropper loop in squid in the Santa Monica Bay. An amazing story. We'll have some details on that. Also, I'll be at Bass Pro Shops at 2 o'clock this afternoon from 2 to 4 to support my son, Philip, who's giving a seminar, but a little meet and greet. If you want to come by and say hello, I would sincerely love to shake your hand and thank you for all of your great support. And in a long list of calamities and possible calamities at sea, I almost went up on the rocks yesterday. More on that in just a moment. All right, everybody, great to be with you all. If you're noticing that the camera is slightly tilted today, it's not for dramatic effect. It's because I can't find my tripod. So my camera this morning is on one of those rod spikes that you surface with. And, uh, you know, that's our budget here at Friedman Adventures right now. So I'll see if I can scrounge it up, uh, up enough money to get out and buy a new tripod today. And man, am I getting that old where I'm starting to leave things around? I shouldn't have made so much fun of Bruce Kuhn, the 81-year-old gentleman who caught that giant cabazon. It's coming back to haunt me. All right, let's get into that top story right now, that big bluefin. And I have very few details on it. I just have not been able to get any details. However, good friend of mine, Matt Schlurp, great guy. He said Gary LaCroix, who's an old-time skipper out of Redondo. Gary knows the guy and you know, kind of intimated to me that he could verify that catch. So you take it to the bank with Matt Schlurp and uh, Gary LaCroix. That is gold as far as I'm concerned. But no details. You've seen some photos of that great catch. A really amazing catch. David Maestro, of course, David was on Freebit Adventures here recently and put on one heck of a podcast with his vast knowledge. He was helping to gather some facts with me also. An incredible catch, no doubt about it. Now, we can harken back to a day when there was bluefin tuna on a regular basis in the Santa Monica Bay, but I don't remember any fish of this size being caught. We used to catch those 15 to 25 pound bluefin, some a little bit bigger on the half day and three quarter day boats. Used to fish with a number six or eight hook and really light line, sometime as light as 10 pound mono to catch those bluefin back in the 70s and that time period. In fact, you've heard this story many times before, but Eddie Leland was decking for Joe Schilling and he had run off well over a month in a row and needed a day off. So Joe turned to me and I was about 12 years old at that time to deck on the mascot for and we put together one of the best days ever had nothing to do with me. I was standing on the tank, chummy. Uh, we put together one of the best days. I believe it was 117 blue fin tuna right off the Topaz Rock Jetty. Incredible day. I'll never ever forget seeing those bluefin just push up water and move right toward the stern and Joe telling me just one at a time right there in the corner keep them coming keep them coming and everybody just bend up. An incredible day and at the end of the day Joe Schilling said come on up to the wheelhouse. So I followed Joe up to the wheelhouse and he said here this is how you go forward this is how you go in reverse I don't mind if you play around a little bit just make circles while I clean fish. And Joe down there on the boards, I think he found a deadhead also who helped him out uh, clean all those fish. That was a remarkable day. However, back to this extraordinary catch, and I hope I can get the gentleman who caught the fish on a podcast in the next couple of days. I'd like to preserve this as a part of sport fishing history because it truly is that big, great fish. He was up there presumably fishing for the white sea bass that guys have been fishing well over a month for up there. There's a squid nest. And of course, when you have squid, there's going to be predators. We just didn't think it would be a bluefin like this. So really an incredible catch. And we'll try to gather some more details as we go along. All right, um, in addition to that, everybody, we'll go down to San Diego in Sonata area. We're fishing for bluefin tuna. Has been tough and remains that way. It is very difficult. And it's not a lack of fish. And, I, and we've been talking about that for quite some time. It's just they don't want to bite. And anybody who's fished bluefin and tuna for any amount of time knows that that's exactly what happens with fish in general, but it seems like more so with bluefin and tuna. They are just so fickle and they are 
having a lot of those San Diego boys down there pull their hair out. And a reminder to you all that, you know, times are tough. You're not catching much fish. A, that can switch right now. Maybe going on as I'm doing the morning briefing. B, those crews down there in San Diego and anywhere for that matter, never work harder than they do when fishing is like this. On an emotional level, just trying to make it happen, just trying to come up with a new game plan, you know, just all the work that goes into it. I hope that that fish turns on, and it's just a matter of time. You gotta think that that bluefin is gonna get on the bite. You need to go prepared if you're going down there. So 30 to 40 pound fluorocarbon uh, works great if you find a kelp patty or you find those boiling, breezing bluefin, that 25 to 40 pound grade, you'll be fine with that. Choose a good hot bait, that always makes a big difference. Don't leave your heavy tackle at home. Still seeing all that big fish, so you definitely wanna have a two-speed reel with 80 to 100 pound on it. Bring your assortment of knife jigs, Sakana jigs, flat fall jigs, and be ready for battle because hopefully the light switch is gonna go on very, very soon. Possible salvations, and I know some people will say, uh-oh, here he goes with that albacore foolishness again. That is one, that albacore, last time we looked at it, and I defer to Tommy Holland, who's doing all the hard work in terms of talking to the commercial guys. 180 miles from San Diego, a little bit of fish. You never know what's going on, whether that's it, just a little bit of fish, or that's the tip of the iceberg, or those fish submarine into the Baja coast. We're just not sure about that. That's what makes guessing at this, trying to put the little bit of facts we have together with an unknown migration pattern. I mean, somewhat known, but a lot of doubts with regard to it. When we're trying to make these guesses, it makes it kind of fun. So that's one. And the other one, of course, is the bluefin turning on. And the other more likely one, maybe, I guess I could say, is that warm water moving up the Baja coast. You gotta think that some yellowfin are gonna move in, more yellowfin. We've already seen a little bit of it, more yellowfin and tuna. Um, you know, yellows will get on the kelps in that warm water, and perhaps those flatheads will get with the program also. We'll see some Dorado move up the Baja coast. But pure speculation at this point, fingers crossed, that that bluefin tuna gets back on the bite here very, very soon. All right, let me take you to the island scenes right now. And there, Todos Santos off Ensenada, as we've been telling you, a little bit more barracuda down there in that neck of the woods. We're also seeing a few yellowtail. Same with the Coronado Islands, barracuda, bass, bonita, uh, yellowtail, but not anything to write home about. Pretty tough. So we're watching that very closely. San Clemente Island is up and it's down. Not bad, Thunderbird, 14 yellows the other day. Pretty darn good fishing there. On board the Freedom yesterday, they scratched out a little bit of fish, had a couple of gorgeous sea bass on board. In fact, Brandon Kassar was there. He said he met a couple of brothers, Alan and Armin. A couple of great guys, according to Brandon. And there's their catch. Man, those are some gorgeous sea bass, yellows. They really had some nice fish. But the island, Clemente, is not producing with any consistency and no big numbers right now. A little bit of calico, some bonita, good bonita fishing over there. And if you focus on the calicos, you can do pretty darn well. Hopefully we're gonna see that sea bass in yellow and just more consistency to the bite there at San Clemente Island. Also, taking a look also at Nicholas and Santa Barbara and those islands have occasional, I'm looking back behind me by the way, cause there's some surf guys and normally I have it in the camera, but you know, screwed up with the tripod. Uh, up there, Nicholas and Santa Barbara, and there's some good hits on sea bass yellows for some private guys that have been up there. A few sport boats, inconsistent also. Same thing. Man, that's a, I guess, just the underline, inconsistent, huh? Same thing in the Channel Islands yesterday. The Aloha Spirit, 15 guys with 25 white sea bass. Evidence that that sea bass is still around and still putting on a really good show at times. However, you look at the fleet, and it was very hit and miss on the sea bass. So something's up here. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is in the environment that has our fishing very inconsistent, sometimes really good, and other times really, really slow. But we see that permeate the entire coastal regions, island regions, and offshore. So we'll be watching it very closely. Again, I'll be at Bass Pro. Two o'clock uh, in front of the big, well, somewhere around the aquarium. They're having seminars, which are way more important than me showing up 
So I'll be somewhere in that vicinity. You see one of my kids, you can ask them. And uh, Eddie Leland, I think, is going to come along with me. So you get a chance to meet Eddie. And that would be fantastic to say thank you to you. All right, coastal regions, again, there's pretty good. I mean, you can make an argument that the coast is as good as anything right now. It's pretty darn good as we look around. We take a look there um, up in the, uh, or down in the Ensenada area, and down that neck of the woods, more sand bass in the Ensenada area. Some really good calico bass fishing going on at Punabanda, La Bufadora, University Point with a smattering of barracuda. Uh, some yellowtail, as I said, up there around Putabanda also. So pretty good fishing up in that neck of the woods. Good calico bass fishing in the San Diego zone up to Dana Point. A lot of shorts all through there. Occasional good little shot of sand bass also. Pretty darn good. And, um, you know, light line and a good hot bait is always the best way for you to get the job done. Up here in the Santa Monica Bay zone, uh, that area, um, or pardon me, here in Long Beach and San Pedro, um, wow, I mean, what can I say? The victory, limits of sand bass yesterday. And the conditions out here yesterday were not all that great. It was kind of putrid, I'll tell you about that because I gotta tell you how I almost went on the rocks yesterday. But great sand bass fishing for the victory. The Enterprise, Andy Surratt called in for Pierpoint Landing. Andy saying that he had good mix of sand and calico bass and barracuda. Not bad at all considering the conditions we're not great, so we'll keep our eyes on that. And as we move you up the coast, the Island Spirit. Really nice day of fishing for Cody Rogers out of Ventura Sword Fishing. You should jump on board with him. 805-676-3474. Cody had 36 barracuda, I think it was. A nice little mix of sand and calico bass. Threw back a lot of short bass, so good action. It really sounded like a lot of fun. And that zone continues to impress. Santa Barbara's got barracuda and some bass for the guys that focus in on that. So that Channel Island area also showing some significant signs of life. Um, also, I want to remind you our Pride two-day trip departing on July the 5th. Still room. Two spots available. If you want to go, send me a text 676 apartment. Uh, 657. Boy, I'm losing it, aren't I? 657-227 six four five nine and we don't edit any of this out i want you to see my deterioration mentally in real time all right so yesterday eddie leland myself phil capricio we all met up at woody's diner had a lovely breakfast renewed an old friendship with phil it was a lot of fun to see him and then we headed over to huntington harbor gorgeous area as you well know it's so beautiful and checked out phil but we we're going on a different boat a, a pursuit but we checked out Phil's gorgeous 55-foot Viking, walked on board, checked it out, all the rods and reels and amenities. It looked so good. Can't wait to fish on that with Phil here in the very near future. We jumped on board. The pursuit started leaving the harbor, and as you know, Eddie Leland, he is going to troll going out of the harbor, and he caught this little white sea bass. So Eddie caught that, tossed it back to sea, and we continued on our journey out. So we, of course, went over and saw Mike, Got our bait up there at the West End Receiver. Always great to see Mike. I was yelling Friedman Adventures to him, and he said, hey, why don't you throw me a line? Do something. They're useful. So we got our bait, gorgeous bait, and we headed out, and we made a right-hand turn, and, man, the minute we poked our nose out, we go, what the heck? I thought this was going to be a nice summer day. It was windy and kind of cold and kind of miserable, and it was like I'm almost over this before it starts. But we went up to Point Furman and picked a couple of bass. The water up there, 54 degrees. Are you listening? I mean, that is like freaking Alaska. It was so cold, but we did pick a bass and a rockfish. We anchored, goofed around a little bit, and then, you know, the wind swell was a pain in the neck. So pretty much Eddie and Phil and I said, hey, let's do something else. So we decided that we were gonna fish the break wall, and we were drifting down the break wall throwing some bait and boom, oils, caught a couple of bass, looked good. So we anchored on the break wall. That was our game plan. The anchor there in an area where these fish were even more active, it seemed like boiling up all around. And uh, all of a sudden we decided, okay, let's move. We're pulling the anchor and I notice that our stern is swinging really close to the rocks and Eddie's on the wheel, Eddie Leland. I said, Eddie, watch your stern. 
And so then I look back up at Phil, who's on the anchor, and Eddie says, Phil, engines! So he's lost both engines, and we are really close. So I run back to the stern, and I look over, and we are freaking that close to hitting the rocks. At which point I screamed, punch it, Eddie! And miraculously, he got an engine started, punched it. Nobody ended up overboard when he punched it. I knew what was coming, so I was hanging on. And we missed it by that much. Yet another calamity in my life at sea. Just add that to this long list of calamities, impossible calamities. It was pretty funny in retrospect. And Phil Caprice here, you got to love this guy. I mean, he's laughing about this. And, oh, no big deal. Yeah, we missed it by that much. We had plenty of room. And Eddie, we were all three just laughing about it. And you would think after that we wouldn't get close to the rocks anymore. Oh, hell no. We were right up there on the rocks again trying to catch more bass. So really, really a fun time. And another close call in the life of Phil Freeman. All right, everybody. There's some decent local fishing, as you can hear. Fingers crossed on that blue pin that it starts to kick into gear. What a magnificent catch up in the Santa Monica Bay. You gotta love that 178.4 pound bluefin tuna. It doesn't get much better than that. And of course, we'll be watching the islands and albacore and warm water flow up the Baja coast. So many possibilities, so little time. See you at Bass Pro Shops this afternoon at two o'clock. Thanks again for joining us. Don't be afraid to scroll through and find some other great videos, including Chef Jason over at Shoals in Long Beach. He's got a great ceviche uh, recipe up that, man, he made it sheep's head, and it was so good. Check that out or go over there and visit him on Shoals in Long Beach uh, on 4th Street. You're going to have a really, really good time with him. And also Bruce Kuhn and Eddie Leland. They both have two recent shows that are great. Bruce talking about this giant cabazon that has held up in terms of size for 65 years, believe it or not. That makes Bruce really old. And Eddie Leland with some great memories from the Redondo Barges. All right, everybody, have a great day. See you at Bass Pro Shops. Thanks again for joining us.